Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Chinnery, and I'm coming to you from Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County in Troy, New York. And it's nice to see everybody coming into our Zoom meeting here today. This is another one of our Lunch in the Garden programs, and it's free and open to the public, so we're glad you're here. Um, a couple of housekeeping announcements. If you have any questions for Denise, our speaker today, you can type them in the chat box. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And then we'll be answering the chat box questions at the end of the program. And then the other thing that we always remind people is that these programs are recorded and put onto our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and type in Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County, all of that will take you to all of our videos uh, that we've archived there. And you can watch any of our programs that we've been doing on Zoom. So this program will be up in a few days, but all of our programs are there for viewing and uh, hope you enjoy them. We'll have one more of these Lunch in the Garden programs next week. We're going to be talking about beginning vegetable gardening and uh, we'll be back at noon on Wednesday the 27th of April. And then we're going to take a break uh, from our Zooms and we'll probably see you again in the fall. That's our plan at least. So Stay tuned for more, and um, if you're on our email list, uh, you'll be getting those announcements. Okay, so our speaker today is Denise Maurer. Denise has been a master gardener since 2010, I think, right? Or is it 2004? 2004. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, the time, time goes quickly. And Denise is a woman of many, many talents. She's a great speaker. Uh, she has had a long career as an interior designer. And that certainly carries over into her gardening because she's a really great gardener and has a wonderful eye for color and texture and does lots of programs for us on those types of uh, topics in gardening. The, the really the visual aesthetics that some of us like me are a little more challenged about. So I learn a lot from Denise and we're really glad to have her here today. And her topic today is repurposing found objects into garden art. So welcome, Denise. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks, David. It's always fun to talk about something creative that just gets me all excited. Um, so I'm just going to get started right into it and share my screen and find it. Where are you? There you are. Uh, share and play. Okay, here we go. Looks good. All right, thanks. So, garden art from found objects. Um, I don't know about some of you, but there's, I always look at things from a perspective of what else can I do with this item? And so as things break and get damaged and whatnot around my home, if I'm throwing part of it out, I'll look at the stand or I'll look at something that's remaining and I'll, I'll find other ideas for it. So um, that to me has started a collection of items that has, um, been very gratifying and, and decorating my garden with a little bit of whimsy and um, and having fun at the same time. So we'll get started on um, how we go about this process. I'm going to give you lots of ideas, lots of visuals, and um, also some how-to instructions on how you can accomplish this. So um, starting with, you know, we're looking at things that have lost their function or their use as what they were originally intended for, but that doesn't mean that they can't be given a second life. So I'm looking at this picture, this collage of all of this um, used metal objects that, that have been accumulating here, and I'm just studying it and I'm thinking, okay, that wheel would make a really great garden trellis. Um, if it were mounted on a fence, I could have climb, uh, vines climbing up on it. Or if I was, you know, so inclined, I could make it into a spinner and um, use a, a heavy conduit or a wooden rod or something to attach it so that it moves with the wind. I can paint it. I could add beads to it. Um, I find lots of opportunities in that one little wheel. If you look at the little um, um, oval-shaped galvanized trug there, that actually could be served as a, as a raised bed planting, or it could also be a water feature in your garden. In front of it, front and center, there's that little basket with the um, 
the rounded hooks coming off of it. Think about that um, with hummingbird feeders hanging off of the side edges and maybe in the center in it, you could add a pot of red flowers and uh, you would have a, a condo development of hummingbird stations there for you. The, um, the little arm there that you see at the bottom, it has that hope sign in front of it and whatnot. That could begin, be the beginning of an art, a garden entrance. Um, you could put it at the top of, of a fence. You could put it on, on a uh, flag, a couple of shepherd's hooks and use it as an entrance into a garden. So just looking at this very, very quickly, I'm filled with ideas and that's what I want to share with you today. So we can also reuse objects. Obviously, this boat is not going to float in the water any longer, but you can tell that it's been well loved and um, has spent quite a bit of time in the sea. However, that doesn't mean it's end for um, people that enjoy being close to the sea. You can um, dock it right on your lawn and plant it up with flowers and you've got a second use. And for me, that speaks to me and says somebody in that home really loves sailing. Um, and so that, that, that tells me something. And I also like that it's being reused and, and not just going to waste. So how do you begin with doing things with objects that you found or may have hanging around? Um, this just shows you some of the items that you can use in creating garden art with different objects. Um, you see a display of glass there. Sure, I took that when I was at some estate sale, um, but whether you go to estate sales or thrift shops um, or antique shows, there's always something out there that can be used um, in garden art and can actually shockingly surprise you on, on, on how creative you can be. And I have to say that once the word's out that you're a collector of certain items, you will have drop-offs all the time. We've had three garden days, three make-it days of making garden totems just from the inventory of glass supply that I've accumulated from, from good friends and neighbors to say, here, you could use this, I'm cleaning out. Um, and I still have plenty of inventory. So, um, you know, it's it doesn't cost a lot of money, doesn't cost any money if you don't want to, um, just use what you have. Ideas are like rabbits. You get a couple and learn how to handle them and pretty soon you have a dozen. So let's take a look at what we can do with certain items. I've broken it down into elements. Um, the first is glass and ceramic where we can create sparkle and shine. I might have to show favoritism for glass in the garden because I just love the way that even if it's clear glass, if it's cut glass, the sun just picks it up beautifully and um, the light just flows over your garden. Um, but here you see some examples of flowers made of glass. And the one on the left, I love this little container. It looks so friendly and so much fun. Um, different pieces of glass and saucers, votive cups, cups, sugar dishes um, have been mounted, have been layered, I should say, on top of one another and um, to create this little flower. And then they are set on stands, um, which you can do easily with a hockey puck on the back with a drilled hole, and you can put a metal dowel through it to keep it pretty sturdy. On the right, you can see a close-up of one um, using a ceramic saucer, a candy dish, a saucer from a teacup, um, even a fruit compote and a little votive cup. And all of that makes just a lovely flower. Notice how the purple of the compote um, just picks up the violets that are on the, um, <clears throat> on the dinner plate. So just very, very beautiful. And you know, oftentimes our gardens are not totally in bloom. So having this color that's there constantly is really nice and they're portable. So you can move them around your garden um, whenever you feel you need a touch of color added to an area. So on the left, you can see a garden totem that I, I made for my aunt a few years ago. She loves the color red, um, but you can see that it's merely a vase with a bud vase, with a saucer, with another bud vase turned upside down that is stacked on each other. And that is a garden totem. Um, on the right, these are totems as well, but they're they're used in a different um, 
routine. They have a base that has a bud base to them so that a shaft like a rebar, copper tubing, PVC can go through them and then that, um, that bar can be pushed into the ground to give it support. Um, but also notice how these different um, garden totems gathered together look beautiful together. So how do you make a garden totem? Very easy. Um, I have to say, uh, teaching some other master gardeners to make these recently, um, the first ones they were a little unsure of, but by the second one that they made, their creations were astounding. They became very creative because they learned how to turn things over upside down, group them together and, and whatnot. So what do you need? Well, you'll need some, um, some silicone or some glue. And I use either the silicone two in a clear finish um, for caulking or the E6000. Um, the caulking you can also get in a tube if a cartridge and a, and a caulk gun are too difficult for you to use. Um, so um, both of them work well. Both of them are rated for extreme temperatures, so they, they won't melt in the sun in our hot summers. Um, and that's the type of adhesive that you'll want to have on hand. Also, you'll need some vinegar and water because you want to start with your glass clean and free of any marks. And you also want to make sure that they're very dry. A rag to clean up things, especially if, you know, some of your glue um, goes strays from where you want it to be. And of course, you need those glass parts, whether it be clear glass, colored glass, um, saucer plates, anything you see. I've used lampshades, um, globes from light fixtures, um, perfume bottles. There's just anything that you could imagine. And after you have cleaned all of your glass parts and assembled all the materials you need, um, you can start to build. And so you do that by choosing a base. You want to have a stable base for your garden totem. So either a heavy plate or a sturdy ceramic base, something that is very, very heavy to keep the um, garden totem upright. And then you want to choose your topper. That would be the very thing you see on the top. You'll see that there's some inverted votives up there and a spear. Um, they can be knickknacks, they can be teacups, um, whatever you'd like it to be. But you want to finish with something um, as a topper um, to finish your totem. And then when you, to give the garden totem stability, you want to use dishes and saucers between the layers. And, and if you'll notice, these most of these uh, dishes are inverted, and that's so water does not accumulate in them when they're when you do use them outside. Um, you'll want to have a planned outcome for these because if you look at these tall garden totems, you cannot just start building one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. Sometimes you have to do sections. Um, and dry them upside down and whatnot to, um, to join the pieces together. Uh, but do it slowly and have a plan. Accidents happen occasionally, but, uh, but not too often. And um, once you have glued them together, I usually um, set the glue around the rim of whatever I'm joining together, put the two pieces together, and then I give it a little turn just to, to get the air bubbles out and to make sure that it's really melded together. Um, let them dry overnight and then continue your layering if you do need to layer. Um, and that's about it for, for making those beautiful totems. And here's some examples of totems that have been made out of ceramic parts. Um, and you know, even these teapots like you see on the right, you can glue that area together um, you know, the section so that they, they do stay together. The little pink hobnail um, dish that you see on the top of the totem on the left, um, that cover I would seal in place so that it would stay, stay there and not take in any water. Look at these sweet, just two pieces of, of um, glass, white glass, White always is remarkable in a garden. And, um, and here they have taken bud vases and 
candy dishes and just inverted those candy dishes on top of the bud dish. And I get these little beautiful mushrooms. And for a little added decoration, they use glass marbles on the top. Another glass object, simple little, um, you can buy drill bits um, for glass pieces and you can draw a small hole, drill a small hole through them. And here you have a little fruit cup dish with a, a crystal that is just suspended through and it makes it look like an adorable bell. Well, probably is, glass and glass do jingle, don't they? <laughs> um, for those of you that love to collect bottles and were lucky living close to Saratoga, I hope they never change their blue bottles. Um, but there's lots that you can do with, with bottles. Here you can see a, um, a, a length of tubing that has holes drilled into it so that the bottles can sit right inside that, that half hoop, if you will. Isn't that a gorgeous um, ensemble, especially situated in the greenery of the plants? And on the right, a little rake, just an inverted old rusty rake. And some of the tongs have the um, bottles just inverted on them. And think about a breeze in a, in a nice summer day. Um, they, could, they could have a little jingle and a jingle in their, in their movement. More bottle art. I just love how you can combine your flower colors with your art colors. And here on the left, you see, can see lattice work that has had um, blue bottles inserted into some of the spaces. And clematis has been allowed to mingle all around those, those blue. And the colorway is just fantastic, as is the one on the right with the with the Black Eyed Susie's there. Um, that vine is climbing amongst another upright structure of blue bottles. Mason jars have lots of uses. Um, I've, I've had, I think I've had four cartons of mason jars given to me and I don't can, <laughs> um, but I do make art and um, they make nice little lanterns in the garden. You can fill them with tea lights and stones as you see on the right, or you can uh, use the fairy garden lights and just put them in, you know, inside the, um, the mason jar itself and then suspend them from tree branches, or you can make, you know, unique little holders. You can make candelabras. Um, chandeliers, if you will, from um, an old light fixture, an old chandelier, uh, excuse me, an old chandelier frame. You could hang mason lights if you'd like. Bird baths and feeders can be made with a combination of plates and, and um, glass parts from lamps. Um, here you can see uh, like some chandelier bases mounted onto decorative lamp bases. A little bit of spray paint can go a long way too. So um, don't, you know, feel free to be creative with your colors and use them at your will. Now, something like this with the water, you want to, um, water will accumulate. And of course, that's probably your goal if you're using it as a bird feeder. They appreciate you're keeping it filled, but do keep it clean with, keep it filled with clean water. And, um, and be kind to our birds. On the right, simple um, saucer, cup and saucer, has been glued together with the cup on its side. And um, these make great hostess gifts. You can use them, and here you see bird seeds filling out of it. Um, and I do use these, I make several of these up and I have little baggies of bird seed. And again, I use them as little gifts when I, when I need to, when I feel I want to give a gift to somebody. Um, and uh, you also can fill it with tea lights. You can fill it with jam if you're trying to um, reach another type of bird. Um, but again, they're delightful and don't throw away those cups and saucers. Moving into natural elements, um, let's talk about sticks and stone. Um, here you can see some very, very colorful sticks. On the left, these are actually assembled using different pieces of wood and then they are mounted and structured together, um, screwed together, if you will. And they have been painted in some really fun and bold um, finishes. 
On the right, you have simple sticks that probably were filled with um, lichen and whatnot. And in all of their crudeness, they were painted whimsically, you know, painted first with a, a solid coat and then just having fun with, with your paintbrush, dabbing on different colors and whatnot. But standing them up together in the garden would be amazing for an unusual work of art. You could also use um, old stair balusters if you've had a remodel project and you have stair balusters left over. Those two make great sticks that you can decorate and paint and use in the garden. They also make nice, um, the, the balusters also make nice um, structure supports for uh, bird baths. Here you can see a cairn on the left. Um, cairns are um, the, the, the joy of stacking stones on top of one another. They're meant to be signposts to point the way and, you know, for someone to mark a path and whatnot. Um, but you can look and collect simple stones and stack them on top of each other. If you want it to be a, a more permanent structure, you can glue it together with mason caulk um, or the silicone too will also work. And um, if you wanted to make a bigger piece, you could even use a drill bit to go through the stones and mount a rebar or another metal shaft to hold them upright. On the right is some stones that have been hand painted with the exception of one, and then just creatively layered one on top of the other to create that artifact. And I think it's just stunning. Um, and the fun of painting the rock as well as gluing the parts together and then placing it in the garden would be just so much fun. Pallets. There's so many pallets in the world. They're only built for temporary shipping and whatnot. Um, but it is wonderful if we can reuse them. On the left, you see some garden, some pallets that have been converted into planters um, with just a very basic um, finish of paint on them to give them a little bit of color and a little bit of life and really makes a striking feature on that, that stone wall. On the right, you can see an upright vegetable garden there. Imagine that if you've got a little patio. Um, you don't have to go without your vegetables or, or feel that you've, you, know, you, you have to get them from the grocery store. You can have the freshest and the best um, and you'll know what goes into it, what's been sprayed on it, it's all yours. Um, and they make perfect planters. So consider this for herbs, um, for vegetables, and even flowers. Great for patios. Pine cones have lots of uses. Here it's just being used as a simple mulch in a garden bed, um, but they too can be made into garden totems. They can be sliced to make flowers. You can make wreaths out of them. You can um, suspend suspend them with twine and color them, dip them in paint and make different colored um, little bob bobolettes, if you will, in your in your garden, hang them from tree branches and let them sway in the wind. Tutors on the left been built with um, recycled lumber, um, some leftover bamboo and whatnot. And you can see some of them are just natural sticks, just sticks collected out in the woods um, and repurposed into these beautiful structures. Not only they're nice even by themselves, um, but to have some beans growing out of them or some um, some morning glories, it, it just, just does so much for your garden and every garden needs a vertical axis as far as I'm concerned. On the right, this simple little trellis, I, I haven't made this. I, I did see this in a, gar in a garden and sandwich on the cake, but um, this is done with just a, some branches that have been cut to the same size and then strung out on a ladder with um, five strands of, of um, roping. And that gives the, st the stability so that the, the trellis will not sag or anything. But how cute is that? I could even make it a, take it a step further and maybe paint those sticks if I wanted to. That would be fun too. 
I came across this cairn on the left when I was visiting Vancouver on a gardening trip. And um, I was just really, really impressed with, with this symbol. And um, that looks like quite the balancing act. But again, you can do that with silicone and mason glue. So you just got to collect the rocks. It might not be something you build over a weekend. Maybe you spend a year collecting your favorite rocks and then you make it into your work of art. So on the right, we can all have this in our garden. These are simply Christmas, plastic Christmas ornaments, all beautifully colored. And um, they are mounted on those sticks that, you know, the garden sticks that we use to support our, our flowers and our, our peonies and all of that. So very, very simple installation and a uh, way to recycle things. Maybe you've changed the color on your Christmas tree and um, you have these left over. So just beautiful and a lot of spark of color. Again, notice how they're massed together and that gives it the, um, the wonderful effect that you see there. All right, now I want to talk about functional art. Um, and we'll start with this right here. We have some, some ordinary terracotta clay pots. They can also be plastic pots. They do not have to be terracotta pots. Um, these were embellished with clay images. You can see on the right, I put up some molds that you use. These are silicone molds and air dry clay. Um, and we had a couple of sessions of these. These pots will be for sale at the garden fair and tool sale in May. So, um, you know, they're not too expensive. We price them to go, but some chalkboard paint, um, some of the molds applied and glued onto the terracotta pot and then painted and embellished with some um, deeper tones. It's they're just very, very unique. And again, plastic or terracotta, you can do this. Here is a chair that is not um, suitable for, for humans any longer, but this little red chair with the pot of red geraniums and the red pots of, and red um, accessories structured around it creates a very, very inviting vignette. And I think if they could get a few shakes there with hummingbird feeders, it also could be a really nice feeding station, couldn't it? Here's some other things that uh, you can use that um, maybe have no purpose um, as they were originally intended, but here on the left, you can make a swing out of an old chair. Um, the base is broken, but the, the upright is still okay. So a few holes and some, some cording and you've got a swing, as long as you've got a stable stem to a uh, branch to mount it to. And I love this bed on the right side made out of garden pallets. Um, some very heavy garden pallets, just strung up with roping, um, add an ear, ear, Air, blah, 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 what am I trying to say? One of those um, air mattresses. There you go. <laughs> and um, you've got a lovely bed to sit and enjoy your garden on one of those rare days off where you can sit there and just ponder. If you've got some old architectural elements laying around, such as doors and window frames, they too can be very, very interesting in the garden. Um, on the left, you see this door that has been, um, was antiqued in pink and uh, has certainly survived some elements. I mean, they added a window box to the front of the door and it becomes a great little screen in a garden. Nice little feature accent that says, look at me. Um, so you can use it as a privacy screen. You can use it as an accent, a vertical accent in the garden. And, you know, doors and whatnot, I've even been known to become nice potting benches. So if you've got somebody like yourself, um, <laughs> uh, who is creative and can use a saw and whatnot, you could make some very interesting pieces with, with old architectural elements. On the right is a series of doors that have been hinged together, and then a fifth door was added to the top, so you have a little bit of a, um, a retreat when you're out in the garden if you need to take a break from the sun. And I think it's just, just fun to have it out there. And this chair is just so adorable. It reminds me of a chair that I once bought um, with a client. We were out antiquing and she loved the chair and there was a pair of them. We decided she would buy a chair and I would buy a chair. And 
And um, while she has moved from the area, um, that chair still serves as a reminder of Beth and the fun time working together. But I love the patina on this chair and uh, the seat was missing. Um, so they added a pot to it and um, forgive my pun, but I'll call it a potty chair. Here are more pieces that had a different purpose at one time. On the left, you've got an old cable holder and the beginnings of a glass mosaic being built on that. And David might like that because I know that David uh, diddles in, in mosaic, actually he does more than diddle. He is a really, really great artist with mosaics. Um, but anyway, this is... Um, um, how a, a design that's coming up and they're incorporating different types of glass marbles and glass tiles and even some jewelry elements. And on the right, an old toolbox just set on brackets and planted with these little pansies. What a nice spring welcoming sign this is for somebody. This is one of my favorites and it's actually something that I covet very much. And as I was reviewing my talk, I was like, Denise, all of the kitchens you've worked on, you didn't ask to save any of those drawers from the kitchens. <laughs> so I'm going to, well, I'm kind of retired now and I think I'm doing my last kitchen. So I'm in search of drawers. But these boxes, these drawers are just structured in a way so that um, you can use them as planters. They're repurposed anyway. They were probably going to be thrown out or discarded. So by simply stacking them together and mounting them in a way that you could fill them with, with soil and, and plants, you have a wonderful way to um, identify your home. And look how it coordinates with the door frame there. Another thing I have a lot of in my garden is um, spears. I just seem to love round objects. Um, and here you can see some bowling balls that have been uh, given a new life with mosaics, another, another thing for David to think about. Um, but these bowling balls are easy enough to accomplish if you've got some glass mosaics, um, you, you merely put your adhesive down um, on a scrub ball and um, build in your design accordingly. Here's some more bowling balls. On the left, I love the naturalness of this one. The left is a bowling ball that has had um, pieces of black stone glued together. It looks like a little huge pine cone, doesn't it? Um, but how striking is that as a unique and a natural object in your garden? And on the right, some um, balls or spears that have been covered with the glass marbles that you can easily get at any craft store or dollar stores. Uh, upper right is covered with pennies. And um, then the one on the left has actually been hand painted. And there's other things you can do with balls and, and they don't have to be bowling balls. They can be spears and whatnot, you know, like exercise balls and things like that. But you can decoupage them and you can paint them. Um, lots of different things you can do. Here you can see some globes from light fixtures and uh, they have just been suspended as lanterns from a tree. And here they're mounted using macrame, um, macrame holders. Anybody remember making them in the 70s? Uh, I've got some mac macrame and, and some patterns. I've, I've got to pull that out and get back to that skill. But um, if you didn't want to use macrame holders and you do have some globes, maybe you have an antique hardware store around you or a thrift store that you can pick these up, um, you can just wrap um, wire around the fitter portion of the globe and then pull up your chains or your, your, um, your, your hanging parts from there. Odd objects make strange art. And uh, yes, on the left, you can see these very worn shoes probably served the gardener um, very well and probably left them out in the rain a little bit too long. Anyway, aren't they fun just planted with succulents and allowing them the moss and everything to, um, to make them look like a very natural piece of art. I'd probably put them on a shoe tray so that, you know, it kind of looked like they never moved. I don't know. I like to have fun that way. And on the right, imagine 
Um, they had a rolling pin and lots of, of wooden spoons and they merely colored them in a color that they chose and uh, suspended them by some little beads and whatnot. All of this is so inexpensive. You know, those, those spoons we can get at the dollar store. We all have leftover paint from something and beads are very easy and very inexpensive to work with. So have fun with it. But this would be, I, I, I think I would really like the sound of these spoons moving in the wind. I kind of like that sound of, of wood to wood. And this, this little chandelier on the left um, simply created with a, in a basket that has been outfitted with some votive tea light holders and candles. And then using some old crystals from um, chandeliers um, and chains of beading, which again, you can get in thrift stores, you can get them in the jewelry department of, of um, craft stores. Uh, you can get them in garage sales and antique um, sales. And just look for those pieces and tuck them away. They'll have a use one day. Um, here you see more of the uh, glass lanterns um, from former light fixtures and they merely inserted some, some tree lights in them and you have glowing lights in the dark. And you can see um, on the bottom picture how nice they are at night. I love using anything white in the garden because um, it stands out in the moonlight um, when it's so dark and it doesn't have any effect on our on our starry skies. And then we can go to the birds here. Um, the one on the left, uh, this swan was made out of an old tire, or I should say swans, the flock of swans was made out of old tires. Um, someone was very creative when you think about how they had to consider cutting those out and making the folds just right so that the wings could um, flop out as they do and make the neck of the swan do what it's doing. Very creative. Guess that's all I'll say about that. Now on the right, um, this one, this bird cage has been outfitted with some succulents. So if you, you know, bird caves were very fashionable for us in the, in the 80s. Um, and even the early 90s. So if you've got any bird cages hanging around, maybe you used one for your wedding or something like that, um, repurpose it and plant it up with some succulents, um, maybe a fern in there, or if you want it to um, only be used during the gardening season months, then just plant it up with the annuals and, and other sorts of plants that you'd like. Again, those garden tools, Go to our tool sale, you might find some bargains, although we've been restoring a lot of them. You might find some pieces that you could cleverly assemble into um, objects of art. Here, this little guy on the left is um, part rake, part um, bottle caps, part curtain ring, um, and its little hands are little garden tools. So, but he is just a perky little fellow and I just think he is adorable. On the right is another old rake. You know, our rakes are probably one of the things that we go through the most, isn't it? Because those prongs are, are um, very soft and they tend to bend and stretch and get out of shape. But here it was just fastened to a fence post in an inverted position and it has a clematis growing up it. So um, soon that clematis will fill the rake's top end and it'll just be gorgeous and, and be functional as well. Ladders are always a good addition into your garden. So if you've got any rickety ladders hanging around, maybe you like a rustic look of, of a paint splattered, really heavily used ladder. Um, and you can use it that way in your garden if that is your, your garden theme. Um, but if you're more contemporary and you want it to be a little more simplified, perhaps you want to paint it in, in a pretty color. Um, and again, you can use it to place pots on it. You can use it as a trellis. Um, you can use it to outfit it with other garden objects that you want to display. Um, it, it has a multiple of uses. And you've heard me say it already today, every garden needs a vertical element or more. You need to have that constant movement of up and down in your garden to give it interest. 
Another little handy way to have um, vegetables and herbs close by um, is using um, gutters, aluminum garden, gutter parts to make these nice little planters, easy enough to assemble, to put together with the end caps and whatnot. Um, you can cut them into different lengths and then just suspend them with wire or roping or chain. Um, you can mount it to a wall if you'd like, or you could suspend it as you see it done here. But great for planting things close up. And what I like about it is, in this case, it's on an elevated deck, which means the deer and the rabbits can't get to it. Another one for David. I know he likes to bike. Um, these bicycle rims have seen their day and have no longer used on a bicycle, but don't they make a nice little trellis if they're just mounted on a fence like this? And they don't even have to be mounted on a fence. They could simply be wired together and um, you could use very large garden staples to um, hold it upright in the ground. And um, you can find other creative ways to suspend it as well. And I think I would just like to add a little bit more color to it because I'm a colorful sort of person. Um, here is two other items that you can do. I talked about glass and, and especially cut glare glass and how it is wonderful when the sun hits it. And this, here is an example on the left of a piece in my garden. It's a punch bowl um, that I it's a crystal punch bowl that I bought at an estate sale because it had a crack and who cares? I'm just putting it in the garden. I'm not using it for anything. I'm not serving punch from it. Um, but anyway, I took this large crystal bowl and I turned it upside down. It came in two parts with the base and the bowl um, and put it on an, an old planter base that I had hanging around. Underneath it, you can see um, Artemisia, the silver mound growing it, I have planted that under it so that it would resemble a skirt, a, like a bride's gown, if you will, um, as it fills in and it's doing remarkably well. I can't wait to see it this year, although I haven't got the, the, um, the punch bowl out yet. But, and if I wanted to, I could um, put a planter in the top of that or just add a little um, flower arrangement if I was entertaining, something like that. But be creative, turn things upside down, um, put them inside out, you know, have fun with it. On the, on the right, you can see that the um, this little gardener has been made of clay pots. Um, and I know that's easy enough to do by using roping and putting a knot, a large knot at the, um, just at the hole and then just pulling the other pots up incrementally to get the stack that you're wanting. But um, look at him, he's just got his tools in his hands and he's ready to go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him to do some edging for me a little later. More ideas to spurn your, your um, creativity. Some brackets on the left with a baluster and some other old pieces of um, metal and whatnot were just joined together to make this very clever dragonfly. And on the right, I just added this one um, because I came across it as I was preparing of these colorful flan, um, fan blades that had been painted and recycled and repurposed in the garden. And I, I was quite interested in this because I actually just took down a ceiling fan and I was sure to save the paddles because I said, I can do something with this. So um, that, this has given me an idea for something I might do. I look at these ordinary items that had a purpose in the kitchen originally, and now they're made into wind chimes. The tea bucket, uh, the teapot uh, has been planted with petunias and then um, punched with holes so that silverware, leftover um, silverware could be suspended and um, that could give us quite a tingle when, when the, um, the wind blows. And on the right, I love these calendars being used as containers because it's got its natural drainage. And um, I actually happen to have a yellow one downstairs in my little playroom. So I might be making this one because I just think it is really adorable. But same, same theory as on the left, you know, you just use those holes to suspend your, your, um, your silverware there and um, plant up the top 
container with some nice flowers and there you have it. Very, very clever. And sometimes you have to work with what you have. So I just throw this in. Um, in 2010, we took a trip to Europe and while we were in one of the gardens, we came across this garden folly and obviously it was missing a statue and I wanted a picture with the statue there. So happy husband Don was, was very eager to fill the bill and um, he didn't get arrested or anything, but he hopped on that little pedestal and served as my muse so that I had a statue in this folly. So let's talk about now that you build your creations um, and you have all of these delightful things to go out into your garden on, on how to display them in the garden. So there's certain things, garden can actually be like um, map posts, if you will. You know, if you want to have people look across your garden to see the bigger picture, if you will, you want to place something at the back of your garden to draw the eye across. In this case, they took more bicycle wheels and mounted them on, on uh, some conduits and colored them and put them at the back of the garden. So when you enter into this view, you don't see the flowers on the ground first, you see the bicycle parts beyond, the sculpture beyond, and then you take in what's in front of that sculpture. So that's if you want to see the whole vista, place your, your object at the back of it. And if you want to just emphasize something and maybe it be a stopping point in um, visiting your garden, group your items together. On the left, you see some glass um, spikes that have been interspersed among some fallen trees. And I, I just, uh, there's so much that speaks to me in this picture from the, the gray weatheredness of the stump to the sleekness of the glass objects to the texture of the ferns. It just, it just to me says beautiful, just beautiful. And on the right, this is a, a picture from my own garden. You can see my love of spears here. I have grouped several spears in the foreground um, because when you want somebody to see something up close, you want to draw them towards that, that area by using something interesting and something low and close to that. So these spears grouped at different heights, um, close together fills that bill. Another example of up close for focus. So as I talked about mounting your garden art beyond your garden, if you wanna see the whole vista, if you want to have somebody see something up close and really focus in on something, then you want to place an object of art right there. And this grouping of the ceramic plates with this old um, chair and a pot on top of it does just that. If you've got some um, buildings or walls or fences that maybe are not very attractive in your backyard, you can um, use saucers and old hoses and, and uh, ceramic dish parts, sort of like the garden totems to make this garden wall. Um, the stems are actually made out of hoses that are simply affixed to the wall and then the, um, the plates that are glued together are mounted above that. So how fun is that? Just so whimsical. And uh, texture, you'll want to think about texture when you're putting your art together, you know, rustic with smooth, that sort of thing. On the left, you can see more glass spears and, um, and posts that are tucked in amongst the, um, the greenery there. And the greenery is what gives us the contrast and texture from the sleekness of the glass to the roughness of the, um, of the gardening elements. Winter interest is another thing to consider with your art. Some art comes in, a lot of my garden, all of my garden totems come in. Anything that's fragile, my spheres and whatnot, do come in during the winter for protection. Um, but something like this rugged uh, bottle tree that could be left out and, and some of your more rugged um, pieces of art, uh, you can leave out. And um, I don't know, I'm of the opinion sometimes when we get a snow like yesterday, it, it actually enhances the art that you have out there. 
You have to understand the process in order to know the possibilities, said Bob Timberlake to me once at a convention. And so I want to share a little bit more inspiration um, and just some ideas that you can use. So I hopefully have talked a lot about the process of the gluing together and, you know, the drilling and, and how to set things into the yard. Um, but just to, to give you more ideas, on the left you see these collection of glass plates that have been mounted together to form this beautiful flower. And look how it's set up front and close to bring you in to see those hydrangea. On the right, an old lamp um, base has been simply changed over by adding a few acrylic elements to the top and um, just placed in the garden. Looks like a very elegant statue. More flowers. Notice the play on colors and how you can coordinate those things. And also the play on lines, the roughness, the ruffleness, and the pierced and uh, the painted glass. Just all of that adds one to the other. If you have some little ones around, maybe they're grandchildren, maybe they're, maybe you have a daycare, you might want to accumulate um, some of these outgrown boots and uh, have a, a nice little fun day with those little guys. They could plant them up with marigolds and, and or vegetables if they will. Um, and then you can display them all at, together, just, just, just mounting them all together or even setting them on stairs together. Um, really just spells cuteness. It really does. And the kids will have fun too. You could even do it with soup cans and, and whatnot, have fun painting the soup cans and then doing your potting in that. Other items that you might want to consider here is an old um, torsier lamp that no longer is being used for lighting, but simply filling the, um, the base frame, the the shade frame with Bagman moss, it becomes a very elegant planter and certainly makes a statement in that garden. And on the right, this is as simple as taking a walk in the woods. Um, hopefully it's your woods and it's your sticks that you're accumulating, but more sticks that you can gather. And this is a sculpture that is just made by um, stringing those rustic barren pieces of branches together, cut at different lengths, and then um, adding some little um, flowers that can be ropes, they can be glass objects, they can be even um, a ball of, of lights there if you wanted it to be a lighted screen for you for some celebratory event in your garden. Um, but anyway, just different ideas, different things you can do um, that all create uniqueness and all say, this is me. Um, talking about vertical elements, I love this little garden totem on the left using white milk glass. And um, you can see how the pieces have been inverted. The candy dish starts as a base and then it's got a cake plate and then it's got another, it looks like a light globe and then a bowl and a saucer and topped off with a bell. Um, but sweet, it's got texture. I know what it will do in the evening light. And on the right, this one is a lot of fun, um, especially for me. Anybody who's been in my playroom where I do a lot of um, crafting and whatnot know that I have mannequin legs for a he and a she that I found. Um, figured I'd do something with them one day and this is inspiring me. So um, I could easily mosaic them. I thought about pouring them with paint, but um, anyway, they just, uh, anything for fun, anything to just, be a little bit different is, is um, just makes my day. I hope it makes yours too. This little uh, cup and saucer, sugar bowl, I should say, sugar bowl and saucer um, was created simply by gluing the two parts together and then stringing the wire off the handles of the glass and suspending it from a branch. If you've uh, got a lot of spoons and you're, you're really good at cutting metal and whatnot, you can make some whimsical flowers out of um, bent spoons and forks and whatnot. They actually make good bases for the glass flowers that I talked about by simply bending them and gluing them to the back. More sticks. Look at the pastel. These are old sticks. They're not meant to last forever, but if they give you a season or two of fun in your garden, um, and they make you smile, it doesn't matter that 
you know, they're not, they're not going to last for three years. Cause what did you pay for it? Just a little fun afternoon with some leftover paint. On the right, if you've got leftover tools, talk about joining things together and grouping things together. These tools simply were um, united by using the same color paint on every piece and then interspersed among contrasting yellow flowers. How beautiful is that? Sticks and sticks and sticks. You know, again, doodles and um, woodworkers that enjoy working with um, moldings and trims and puttering with little different parts. Um, I hope you can see the the um, interest in the and the opportunities that you have to reinvent things and repurpose them. Things are pretty, graceful, rich, elegant, handsome, but until they speak to the imagination not yet beautiful. And that is the talk for today. Um, I want to thank you for joining and hopefully we've got some questions. Wow, Denise, I have to say there was a lot of great ideas there, but those mannequin legs, they really were quite spectacular. <laughs> I was like, oh, she, you know, you got some mosaics and then we had bicycle stuff. And then it was like, whoa, <laughs> yes, I got to make one of those. <laughs> I think that, was, tour. that was great. <laughs> I'm feeling like all creative. Like I need to like get out of work and go make something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I love all those ideas. Oh my gosh. Like, where do you, where do you find all these things? Like, on the internet, you can find a lot, but is there a place to look or, you know? Well, um, as I mentioned early on, if people know that you're collecting things, I, it, when I was, when we were making garden tutorials day one, I was telling, they're like, oh, we've got to go to thrift stores and I got to go into the attic and see what I've got stored there and whatnot. And I said, and just, you know, tell a few people, you'll be surprised how things will start showing up at your door. Well, during our class, doesn't somebody show up at my door, a friend, and she's like, I've got a book for Dawn, and I've got a glass for you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so no, thrift shops are a great place to go. Um, Salvation Army, Goodwill, estate sales, um, you know, just anywhere. Um, and, and a lot of people have those vases and, and whatnot just hanging around and accumulating. Um, but other things like bowling balls, mm. I've got four bowling balls and, um, you know, they're just waiting. Actually, I meant to show you uh, before we go, if I've got time, I did want to show you some of the art that we've been making. This is, whoops, got to follow my, know where my, my camera is here. This is a former terracotta pot. It still is a terracotta pot, you can see. <laughs> um, but this is one of the pieces we made with um, the molding around the edge. You simply make that mold and then you glue it around. And this is another type of mold. And we painted it with chalk paint and then burnished it with a diluted bronze. And then I had chalkboard paint here so we can actually write something on it. But um, yeah, so these are going to be for sale at, our, at your tool sale. Um, but this is just, you know, some of them. This is another one. Uh, and this is the one that's been outside in the snow and the rain and everything. And it's held up quite well, even though it still feels like terracotta. It's not, you know, really shiny. They're great. One of the questions actually was that was in the chat box was where do you get the materials for the molds that you put on those? So that's one of the questions. Um, the molds, the molds that I used here are from a, um, it's, they're from Iron Orchid Designs and different um, companies, independent people sell Iron Orchid Designs. And I got the molds from Etsy, from a store on Etsy. Um, they're silicone, reusable, mount, and lots of different options to them. So this is borders. The other one was frames. We have some with flowers and daisies. Um, the chalk paint, I got at a hardware store. 
and the terracotta I got off my potting bench because that's where they were. Um, this is a garden totem. I'm going to turn it sideways so it'll fit in there. Um, this is one that was made and will be for sale at the tool sale. I'm not really trying to sell up the tool, the, um, the sale, but you know, these just happen to be hanging around. But simple candy dish for a base, a uh, little red flower base, a votive, a ceramic saucer that's been inverted with glass marbles, and then a little candle holder, candle holder, perfume bottle. That's great. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> and lastly, oh, bowling oh. ball. Wow. And this bowling ball happened to be just painted with acrylic paint um, that was very um, liquid and whatnot. And it's been varnished and it's heavy. We live in a windy area, so this will not blow away. <laughs> um, but again, with um, that type of crap, pennies, decoupage, you name it. Forgive me while I set this down. <laughs> I'll drop it. Okay. <laughs> so All if right. anybody has any more questions, type them in the chat box and Marcy will read them. Um, somebody did point out that Amazon has silicone molds also, if anyone's interested in that. So that's another good idea. And someone asked, how do you keep them clean? I guess they're probably talking about the totems. I don't know what they're referring to. The totems, um, how do you keep them clean? Well, it rains. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we talked about purposely turning dishes upside down and burning them so water doesn't accumulate in them and dirt. So many people love the ideas and they're putting that, wow, that was wonderful, lovely way to spend lunch in the garden. So a lot of people really liked it, but there's not a lot of questions. Um, oh, how did you get the acrylic paint onto the bowling ball? <laughs> the acrylic paint was uh, mixed with Floetrol, um, which is a, it's a, um, it's an ingredient you can put into paint. It's used in faux painting a lot. It slows the drying time and makes it more liquid. Um, and I just set that bowling ball in a little cup and um, painted it layer upon layer um, as, as I wanted it. And I chose my colors. And then I varnished it. Very nice. Um, what material is used for the molds? For the bulbs? The fruits of the molds. The molds. Oh, oh, air drying clay. It's an air drying clay that you can get at a craft store. You can get at a hardware store too. Um, and silicone mold you can get at craft stores. You might find them in the cake decorating area and sometimes in the jewelry area. We found in working with the molds on the clay pots that the IOD molds were a higher quality um, and easier to work with and to remove the clay, but they, they used the others and got great results. Great. Someone's thanking you for all the creative ideas. Like me, you gotta raise creative juices flowing. <laughs> How do you keep the glass flower from spinning around their stem in the wind? So glass flower from spinning around their stem in the wind. Um, the glass flower is not movable. I mean, it might blow around circularly if the wind is strong enough because it's on a metal rod or a dowel and stuck into the ground. But um, most of the flowers, and I could have brought one up. I have one downstairs. Uh, most of the flowers, I, I put a hockey puck. I glue a hockey puck on the back and then I drill through the side um, for my stake. And so therefore it's very solid. So creative. <laughs> hockey puck. <laughs> she needs to come, it says she needs to come out with a book on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> I just I'm, I'm looking at all those pictures and going how do people think of this stuff because it's when you see it you go oh yeah you could do that but then to get the idea to do it you know ah uh, that's that play period of time you gotta yeah. have that time to play and it's okay to play 
So, yeah. and David, I know when you do mosaics and things like that, you play with that to come up with those ideas, right? You, or you start with something you want to recreate. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, some people have a more flexible mind, though. You know, some of us are very more rigid thinking and some people are more... I don't know, just more flexible. <laughs> it's just, it amazes me. Don't that, ask me to do numbers. <laughs> well, yeah, it amazes me that people think up this stuff. I mean, it's really cool. I could have never been a doctor, an attorney, or an engineer. <laughs> well, obviously, you found your calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that it's inspired everybody. And um, it's always fun to talk about. It's always fun to do. We've had a lot of fun in my uh, playroom and uh, I, it's just it's just fun. So I hope everybody goes out and does something creative and let me know. Um, you can you can access the office, David and Marcy, you know, let them know what you're doing. Share pictures. I would love to see them. And if you could give me permission, I'll use them in future talks. Yeah, that's cool. Good I'll idea. Share them on our Facebook page, if people send them to me, I will share them on our Facebook page and <laughs> yeah, that's a good great. idea. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and paint sticks. I'm like, look at those are sticks. I don't know. <laughs> I could at least do that. <laughs> You've got someone with a raised hand. I don't know what that means, Marcy. Oh, somebody just must have. I think they hit that in the beginning and said. Um, Good morning, I think that, or something like that. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. I don't have any other questions in here. Let me just go back down. Nope, just you should come out with a book. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you, Denise. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all your wonderful ideas and pictures and stories. And I think we all are inspired. And now with the coming better weather, we'll get out there and do some of our projects. <laughs>